This is Marquivus Furious Nias, and you're listening to Deeper Than Music Radio. Deeper Than Music. The core of you, the fans, the truth, is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth, is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. Hello, good morning, good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is Deeper Than Music Radio. Behind every great song, there's an even greater story. I'd like to say hello to those listening to us on Spotify, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Cast FM, Spreaker, and all the other platforms that we're podcasted on. Uh, Today we have a a treat. It's our monthly... um, Film reviews with uh, Final Cut Film Reviews, Dino. And uh, since it's the first or the second week, I don't know, can't remember right now. But since we're already into 2020, we're going to talk about films of 2019 and films of 2020. So, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you from Final Cut Film Reviews, Dino. How you doing? About me. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And Happy New Year and Happy New Decade, everyone. Same to you. So, uh, Dino, I'll let, I'll go ahead and let you take over, man. This is this is your show, so you got it. Right. Um, well, to start with, I actually got something uh, like a bucket list for movies related. I'm just I'm just opening it up as I speak. Basically, what it is, there's a hundred movies that basically, if you've watched them, you scratch off. So I'm just trying to undo it now. Okay. Hold on. Right. If anyone wants it, I believe it's on... You can find it on buymeagift.com, I think it is. So all you do is, there's 100 movies here. If you've watched them, you just scratch it off like you would scratch off a, on a scratch card. But by the way, I no way am I, I plugging the National Lottery or the American version of it, so don't quote me on that one. So, shall we go through it? Uh, shall we go through it together? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Right, so 100 movies starts off with... Short- Shank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. So it ha- Once, but I have watched it, so scratch it off very quickly. And it's a it's a picture of a picture of an axe. So so one down, ninety nine to go. So the Dark Knight, uh, as in Heath Ledger's memorable uh, turn as uh, the it's anarchist open. of crime. Yep. Yeah. So I've watched that. I'm assuming you've watched that as well. Yes, I've seen that one. Why so yeah, serious? Yeah, who hasn't seen that? Who hasn't seen that? Yeah. Which, and for this, you get a bad signal. Now, this next one, City of God, I have absolutely no idea what it is, but just give me a minute and I think I it's a Bra- Brazilian movie, I, I want to say, if I think, if I remember correctly. I may have yeah, seen I bet it. it is. I didn't even know it existed, so I've not watched that. You've, I'm assuming you've watched it because you know about it. moving on so next one is Pulp Fiction which I have watched how can you not have watched Pulp Fiction and it's actually uh, a little picture of Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta there's Emily with Audrey Tatto um, I've not watched that yet there's 12 Angry Men which I've not watched Blade Runner which I have yeah I should point out this is actually the original not the Ryan Gosling sequel because some people are like oh it's Blade Runner uh, Blade Runner was with uh, uh, what's his name Harrison uh, Ford yeah yeah Harrison Ford now, yeah. The, now there's a clockwork orange but the only problem is I haven't watched it because it's not exactly uh, very friendly over here because it's got banned for like three decades or so, or so around here okay yep so there's clockwork orange which I haven't watched Deer Hunter which I haven't but it's very good from what I hear Casablanca unfortunately I can't watch a full movie unfortunately now here's one E.T. Who oh, yeah, hasn't ET. watched that? You haven't yeah. watched E.T.? I've watched E.T., yeah. I said, who hasn't watched E.T.? Oh, yeah, E.T. is a... Cl- I mean, maybe the millennials haven't seen E.T. Well, <laughs> if you... Yeah, so if you haven't, you need to watch it. I believe there's Up, which I believe is what Pixar's one from the other year. I haven't watched that, but one thing I have watched is Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Yeah, I've watched that a long time ago. Yeah, I, yeah exact same here. My sister can't get enough of it. I literally can't get enough of it. 
I, I use that word literally, not figuratively. The Big Lebowski from the uh, Coen Brothers. I've sort of half watched this, but I can't really. Uh, oh yeah, with, that. With, with John Goodman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Office Space. I've never watched that. I have watched the one movie you are not supposed to talk about. Okay. Oh, so you never seen Office Space? That's a good movie. Jennifer Aniston. Nope. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny. It's a pretty funny movie. Uh, fun fact: It was filmed in Texas. It was filmed in Austin, Texas. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've just scratched off Fight Club, the uh, movie you're not supposed to talk about because oh. we don't talk about it. The next oh, yeah, one, which, yeah, yeah, I love it though. Even if even if it is a, a little bit a little bit confusing, a bit weird. But yeah, the next one, which will funnily enough is uh, the guy who we'll be, I'll be talking about in a bit, Guy Ritchie. Mm-hmm. It's his newest one, so this one's actually not Lockstock, which it should be, but it's actually Snatch. Okay. One with Brad Pitt, and, well, it's a case of who's who, really. Old Boy, now, this is actually a South Korean one, but I just can't seem to find it anywhere, so I haven't watched that. Here's one from uh, a bit ago. Leon the Professional with Jean Reno. Uh, I've seen it. Yeah, I vaguely remember it. Yeah. I've seen that one as well. Uh, Scarface is on here. I'll just go through them quickly. So with Scarface, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the uh, original Lord of the Rings trilogy with Viggo Mortensen and Ian McKellen, there's Moonlight, Matrix, Apocalypse Now, Grand Budapest Hotel, Monty Python, In Rouge, Three Idiots, Godfather. I'll just go through them all because it would be here for like an hour. There's... There's uh, George Lucas' Star Wars 4, 5, and 6, Goonies, Jurassic Park, Dirty Dancing, Stand By Me, Schindler's List, Shaun of the Dead, Back to the Future, Silence of the Lambs, Shining, Alien, Memento. Mm. You, you kind of get the idea. I yes, could, we could do them all, but yeah. We could do them no. all, but we'd be here all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so it seems like they got some classic movies in a, in a woven mm. with there, so. And you've got 100 to actually uh, scratch off if you have actually watched it. Wow. Right, so we actually uh, should we have a quick look back at the last movie of 2019 that we watched? Yeah, that we both have watched, I should say. Uh, it was the newest Star Wars movie, which mm, uh, 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 hmm. I could say it was better. It was better than the last. It's not. It's, <laughs> Tunity. Uh, I mean. Episode 9 for a quick version It was alright but I still don't agree with uh, Them bringing back uh, Palpatine mm. I really don't agree with that Although I do, I must admit um, Spoiler alert if you haven't watched this yet But I was actually quite interested to find out That um, Daisy Ridley's parents Were actually, actually, well the dad Was actually Palpatine's son It's like, where did Palpatine have a son? That, that's new Yeah, yeah, that, that was a twist um, What do you think about mm. uh, them bringing back Lando? Oh, I do. I do like Lando Carries, and he was always one of my favorites growing up. Yeah. Well, I thought it was. Um, I thought the one before was it the the last Skywalker. I thought yeah, that one was, was pretty horrible. And then, um, how did you feel about? Well, we knew. Um, rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Correct mm. me if I'm wrong. She was not alive during the filming of this one. Was she alive during the beginning <laughs> filming? I think she. I think she had actually died at the end of uh, episode eight. I think they just used like footage from her from the deleted scenes or the stuff they hadn't used yet and sort of put it into it. So it was sort of like use her in bits and bobs, use, use her for what we can do. And we just, it just basically worked out. She wasn't in it for too long, but obviously not that, not that, not too short that we didn't really notice her. Yeah. It just, it just felt kind of hollow to me. Mm. Her felt kind of hollow so that makes sense because it was just like it was nice to see her in the movie but it still felt kind of hollow mm. yeah so it puts a bit of a dampener on everything really to know that yeah. it was Carrie Fisher's last movie yeah so the only thing I would recommend is if you actually sort of like, like Star Wars I would actually watch it my sister, who is a bit more of a fierce critic than I am, and that's putting it mildly, she seems to think it was good, but for me, it kind of wasn't. It was sort of all right, it was a lot better than eight, but it's not something I would trade, say, Empire or Return of the Jedi over. Mm. And um, do you feel it was a worthy, do you think it was a worthy close to the franchise, or... 
It was a lot better than I actually thought it were going to do, to be honest. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry to be so harsh, but it's just that's just how I felt about it. There is actually a lot of people who say that was literally a trilogy wasted. I mean, I kind of half agree with them. Yeah, it. Uh, but but I personally think it's a, it's a to carry that on and keep it going and close it out. That's a huge. That was a huge undertaking in itself. And after the, uh, like I said, after the the last movie, I was like, ah, eh, I wasn't really expecting much. <laughs> so they mm, they yeah. exceeded my expectations. I think after watching Last Jedi, Last Jedi, sorry, I think it was a case of well, it's gone down it can't get any worse, to be honest. And it sort of got a bit better, but not enough to really think, yeah, this is this is a lot better. But no, it weren't. Yeah, my my thoughts exactly. And do you think? Do you think it'll open up a new chapter of uh, of a, a new Star Wars with with the uh, you know, would it open up a new Star Wars? Because you know now we have what's the the um, the Disney the Mandalorian? Yeah, what's... that's it is actually I know I know everyone, I know it's sort of new. I mean, to be fair, we haven't actually got Disney Plus in England yet. We've got to wait until April for it, but. Yeah, I mean, Landalori was said between episode six and seven at some point, I think it was, but everyone, it's just been so brilliant to to hit, to watch from what I've heard, and yeah. it's actually quite good. So if there is anyone listening who hasn't watched it yet, who's in America, Australia, New Zealand, or I think it's, I think it's Holland, because I think mm-hmm. they've got it as well, I okay. would seriously recommend it. I just feel like Disney is sitting on a gold mine, and I, I, I think... I think there's going to be more to come. Yeah. So, so we'll see. As for if could they make any more movies, sort of like do what we did with uh, four, five, and six, sort of set this after thirty years. I don't see why not. As long as somebody's got a half decent trilogy in mind, that isn't like the last one that we've just had. So I don't yeah. mind that. Because what was the one that was the beginning one where everybody died? It was a movie that yeah, came out. Yeah, wait. Yeah, Force yeah. Awakens. Yeah. yeah, that was just basically a poor, uh, basically more advanced episode four. Yeah, mm. I said that the minute I watched. Yeah, for they've just basically redone episode four. It is that's the line. Yeah. So, have we got anything else to say about it? Uh, no, I think we're on the same page with that one. It was better than the last yeah. Jedi. And uh, we didn't expect too much for the last one, so we were a little surprised. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if we've already done this, but we can redo it again because it's been a while. Uh, the, the sequel to Jumanji with uh, Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, and Callan Gillen and Jack Black. Jumanji 2? Yeah. I wasn't quite I... sure if we covered it, but I thought I'd cover it again just in case we haven't. Okay, okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It wasn't as good as the... I'd, well, it sort of wasn't as good as the original, but then again, it was. It was just worth going just to listen to Kevin Hart um, doing a Danny Glover. <laughs> that's just worth... A, you know, when you say that's worth the price of, of admission allowance, it is literally just worth going just for that moment. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't... I enjoyed the, mm. the first one. I haven't seen the second one. Um, uh, correct second. me if I'm wrong. They, they uh, switch characters, right? The character yeah. switch? Okay. Yeah, it, it kind of doesn't work out that way because, in short, Spencer's gone back in because he's having problems in the real world. So he goes back in, and the problem is everybody sort of, sort of like where Spencer go, go to his granddad's house, who's played by Danny Vito, is like, oh, he's in there. So we've got to go back in again. So five of them go in. Only problem is one stays and the other four go in. So it's kind of like everyone's going like, Spencer, who? <laughs> but it is actually quite funny where it's like who are you who are you but it is actually funny and it's actually a bit sad because I think this might that might have, might have been Jack Black's last movie which is a bit of a shame oh wow is he retiring from uh... I think he's officially retiring I'm afraid oh wow that's the words I've heard whether whether it actually stays true or not it's a different story but if he is unfortunately it's a bit of a sad day is actually quite sad. Yeah, this sad. I would never see him. I mean, his his catalog is so long. Long School of Rock. Mm. And... Oh yes. Um, what was I going to say? The villain. I mean, 
Are you a Game of Thrones fan? Just out of curiosity. Mm. Uh, would you be Would you be interested to know that the Hound is actually playing the villain of the piece? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but but basically he's just the Hound. It's just basically that. So there's not mm. really much to go on there. But I do think that um, Karen Gillian has a lot more. She's more of a she's more of a Dwayne Johnson sort of role because she knows what's going on. She's trying to gut. She's trying to guide two two old boogers, if you like, through the, through the actual maze. And there's there's uh, Fitch, who's actually who's actually whinging because he's Jack Black, and it's like, yeah, how is she managing all this? Oh wow. But just just uh, so everyone's aware, all the original cast are back. So yes, for the ladies, Nick Nick Jonas is actually in it as well. Although we don't see much of him, to be honest. Hmm. But he's still in it, nevertheless. But yeah, anybody who hasn't watched it yet, I would I'd recommend that more than episode nine. Uh, okay, okay, you said yeah, it's just it. as and it's just as good as the first Jumanji. I think it is. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Although. To be, Although to be fair, when I look on Netflix and look at Welcome to the Jungle, I'm just like, no, nah, I really, I really wish it was Jumanji too because I really want to watch that more. Yeah, yeah. S- speaking of Netflix, um, one movie that has been released over the Christmas period that is actually going to be a first for me because it's act- I'm actually uh, reviewing a Netflix movie. It's um, Six Underground with uh, with everyone's favourite uh, foul mouth merc with a mouth, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds himself. What did you think about this one? I like the fact I, I've always loved uh, Michael Bay cinematography. Mm. You know, he did the Bad Boys. Uh, what else did he do? Transformers. But what uh, did you? The Rock Connor. Connor is. I oh think yeah. He, was it Connor? No, he, I think he might have been involved in Connor. Yeah. Oh, well, the Rock too, 60, right? Was yeah, Brian in sixty seconds as well. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem is everybody doesn't really think he's. They always know he does great action, but he doesn't really do much of a story with his uh, movies. I mean, Transformers has been the biggest example of that because everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it's filled with action, but there's no plot, there's no story, it makes no sense." And uh, that speaks on. I think with this, this was action packed. Very like storyline was very bizarre <laughs> to me. It just you- basically kind of felt. Like a little touch of like got sixty seconds of a car chase at the beginning. There was uh, there was the rock when basically they were oh, where were they? Was it Hong Kong they were at? Where we were trying to get someone out? Yeah, and it kind of yeah. went a bit pear shaped from there. Yeah. But overall, I actually think it was quite good. It was I, I actually scrubbed that. It was very good. Yeah, yeah, it it, it was good. It's just like. I guess, well, when the, the, the when the driver died, that kind of caught me off guard, right? But I mean, mm. it, it, it it was good. Just the the storyline was kind of it was it was bizarre to me, <laughs> but I love the action in the movie. Yeah, I did as well. And and Ryan Reynolds isn't exactly Deadpool like in this movie, but he does come off with some good one liners. Well, obviously, we can't we can't repeat them here for obvious reasons. Yeah. But I would definitely if you are if you do have Netflix, I would actually recommend watching that if you can, if it's still available. It should be, but you know what Netflix are like. You never know what's coming or going. Yeah, that's true. But it seems like they're they're ramping up, and I would imagine that the competition is going to heat up now that Disney Mm. Plus is a player. And I've already heard that uh, Netflix has already lost millions of subscribers. Mm I mean, how much is it for? Is it like fifty dollars for a year in the US for Disney Plus? It is, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I've heard anyway. Yeah, you're I mean, correct. It is. Mm. And we, to be honest with you, I have actually signed for email updates, but they still haven't told me how much it's going to be a year. It's just, it's just basically an email that says Disney Plus will be here. I think it's end of March 2020. It's like here's what we have, here's what's coming, but no price still. But I hope. I mean, I'm hoping it's the same price as. Uh, as everyone else pays for it, but then again, this is England. Anything's possible, isn't it? And uh, when when is the estimated time that you guys will be online with Disney Plus? Roughly, I've heard it'll be March thirty first. Oh wow! Okay, that's Spring. the rough. So we haven't got to wait too long for it, but that's the rough date. But obviously, things can change. The only reason it's been that long is because I think um, Disney has some contracts with uh, Netflix for certain movies out here. 
That's what I've heard anyway. So they've had to literally wait until them contracts run out over here and then they can launch it fully here. Mm, okay. Oh, I wanted to ask, we were talking about movies. I finally mm-hmm. went and saw The Joker. Go on then, hit me with it. Um, I actually, it was pretty, it was, it was it, I mean, it was very sad, but I actually liked it. It was creepy, but mm-hmm. I liked it. I enjoyed watching it. Oh yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Congratulations to Joaquin Phoenix if he ever listens, because I believe he, was it the Golden Globes the other week where he yeah, got he, best actor for it. So yeah, he won I, the Golden Globe. Yeah. yeah. So I will say he, it was. I didn't really like it, but I he really deserved that for his performance. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty bizarre because it's like when I heard that it was um, that they were making it a little bit more darker. I was just like, ah, mm-hmm. this is too much. But I actually enjoyed the movie. As creepy as it was, it was it was very creepy. But it's but then again, who can't relate to a character like that? To be honest, I mean, I sort of relate to him on a certain level, and I bet there's people out there who actually do. Yeah. Oh yeah, a little interesting fact for it. Did any, anybody listening know that Bradley Cooper actually produced that movie? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't either. But I guess I guess that's the thing now because um, Seth Rogen produces quite a bit, doesn't he? I think it's he's. I think it's a newsroom on Apple TV's produced or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I'm thinking it's something like that. But he does a lot of producing nowadays. Hmm. He did. A, he did a pretty good job with that movie. I mean, mm. it was definitely dark, and then how they. Some of the tie-ins that they did with Bruce Wayne and how they tied in how the how his family got killed and that was it was pretty interesting that they made it all they tied it all in together. Yeah, they sort of changed it because it was actually in in the comics it was Joe Chill who killed his parents. So they're sort of I don't know if they're aiming for it to be the main cause of why Bruce Wayne became Batman, but it's interesting nevertheless. I mean, there is obviously there's comics out there that explored other rea- realities. I mean, like. Flashpoint, it was actually the Joker was actually Martha Wayne, his mum, and Batman was actually uh, 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 Thomas Wayne, his dad, after uh, Bruce was killed in the uh, crime alley. So, yeah. Right, shall we uh, move on to this year's now that we've got 2019's out of the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Right. Let's talk about cast because everyone's kind of like, "Ooh, is that any good? I don't like it. Is it any? Is it any good?" Mm. Well, let me just uh, cut to the chase right now. It's not half bad. Singing wise and dancing wise, I can't really say anything bad about it. I think the main problem with it is, is that it's been absolutely rushed through everything. I seen. I remember a. Uh, a clip on YouTube from a from like a uh, company called uh, Looper, and they make like um, fascinating documentaries and short uh, skins about this, that, and the other. And apparently, uh, Tom Hooper, I think his name is, who directed it. Apparently, he finished the final cut, all the editing and all that. He finished it with about within five hours before the premiere started. So, oh, wow. I think the problem with it is not that it's not. It's, I mean, it's not a bad, bad movie. But I think just everything of it just was a bit too rushed. And then when they found out there was stuff wrong with it, they sent theatres, like, I'll say, like a second, like a 2.0 version of it, which didn't really help. Mm. Yeah, because I haven't seen it. Um, It looks pretty interesting. I know Idris Elba's in it. Um, I just remember Mm. in the 80s, um, the play Cats, and then what was the song? It was like a song from it, big song. Is it like oh what's it called? I know I think I know which one you mean. It is it like is it a Jer- is it like a Jericho cat or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just um I don't know. I wasn't interested in the play. In the movie, I'll wait till it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to the movies to see it. But uh, your thoughts is it is it is it movie worthy or is it just hey when it comes out, just watch it. I think the thing is, if you're expecting like a Mamma Mia type movie, you are a bit dis- going to be a bit disappointed because there's literally about three or four lines of dialogue. The rest is just singing and that's it. Yeah. 
Is it worth a watch? Maybe. If if you, I think the only people who would watch it is if they're diehard Cats fans or if they fancy, if they fancy a break from like the Walking on Sunshines, the Mamma Mia's, the Lion Kings, all that lot. I will say one thing: Taylor Swift does not play the character you think she might be playing. Because I was actually quite stunned about who she plays, and she's not exactly a goody two shoes girl. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, by the way, I will say the one thing: they, it, what it might lack in the movie, in the movie department, they made up for in the singing department because there's, um, oh god, who isn't there? There's Idris Elba, yeah, Jason, Jason, uh, Jason, du, Jason Derulo. Oh, Jason uh, Derulo's Jennifer, in it. Yeah, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, so they uh, got actual singers, yeah. people that can yeah. sing, entertainers that current entertainers in the movie. Yeah, so it's not as if they haven't uh, basically said, oh, yeah, we're just going to get the cheapest and the worst singers we can find. There's actually decent talent in there. Mm. And Jennifer Hudson, when she sings, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, but have you ever, yeah, sorry, carry on. No, I was going to say uh, the one thing that was hard to d- get used to in the um, I can't even, Elton John movie was mm. the, the, the musical part. You, yeah. I had to kind of adjust to it, but once I got used to the rhythm of it, I was like, okay, I get it. I think, yeah, I think the other problem is when the trailer first came out, everyone was kind of a bit, a bit like, when they saw what everybody actually looked like, they were just like, no, I don't like it. Can we just like have something else? I mean, I must admit, if you like that or if you can actually get used to it, which I can, then, then you, not really much of a problem to be honest but I will spec- I will say for Francesca Haywood she is absolutely brilliant in it She's she looks like a classically trained ballet dancer and I, I must admit I do love ballet mm. it's one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me I actually watched the Black Swan when it came out with Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis and I just fell in love with ballet hmm Okay, so cats. I'll yeah. wait for it to come out so, on yeah. Netflix. So wait if you haven't seen. Yeah, so if you haven't seen it, wait for it to come out. If you're sort of a fan of like the Andrew, um, kind of like the theatre lot, or a big musical fan, watch it. All right. So my week has actually been quite busy this week because I've been seeing quite a lot. One of them is actually. Uh, that's the coolest name in all of Hollywood. Um, Taka Watiti, who directed uh, For Ragnarok, he's got a new one out. Okay. It's called Jojo Rabbit. It's I think the, the plot of the uh, the plot of it is basically there's a ten year old boy named jo- named uh, named Joe who whose mum is basically le- helping the resistance out in Nazi, in a Nazi Germany. I think it is. I think it's in France somewhere. And basically, everyone else is trying to be a soldier, and he just is not one of them. Mm. Basically. And there's also some, there's also something else. His mum is actually hiding a Jew up in the uh, upstairs bedroom. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hold that thought a minute. Okay. Yeah, because when I saw the trailers, and my fiance will will say this as well, we actually thought it looked quite good because it's quite funny. And well, uh, Takawatiti makes an interesting uh, part of Joe's imagination. But the thing is, it's sort of... I watched it. It wasn't great, but it wasn't exactly bad. It was sort of halfway in between, and it just wasn't as funny as I thought it was, or I thought mm. it was going to be. So, so I, kind of, what, I kind of... Yeah, carry on. No, I was going to say, what, what didn't you like about the movie? What made it not great? I think it was just... I was expecting it to be like, like, a, like, a, like comedy gold, and... Whereas for some of it, it was. It just wasn't for all of it. Mm. It's like, you know, when you have, when you say, if you go into a James Bond movie, you know, you're going to, you know, what's coming, you know, the action is coming, the romance is coming, the cars is coming. Uh, these, I'll say a very good villain is coming. You have Judy Dench or nowadays you'll have Ralph Fiennes because, you know, they're, they're probably what some of the best actors in England. But with this, it was like, yeah, there's, there's great cast. The plot, the plot is sound, but when you go into it, it's like, yeah, I didn't expect this. I thought it was actually going to be a lot better. Mm, so they, they had something they could they could have made great, but they didn't didn't yeah. utilize it. Okay. 
I think the only thing that really saves it is the little lad who, play, who plays uh, Joe. Scarlett Johansson is always there, although it is a bit weird hearing, hearing her with a German voice and not a Russian, which is a bit weird. Mm. But you get used to it. She's actually, uh, she actually makes, makes, a, uh, makes a German woman sound quite... Um, not the word I'm looking for. Um, quite nice, even though back then they really weren't. Hmm. But, but there is a fair bit of in, of uh, talent in there. I mean, Sam Rockwell from who was just in Hammer in Iron Man Two. He's in it. Uh, well, I say talent. When I say Rebel Wilson, I don't really, I don't really like her. To be honest with you, I think she just like just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what she makes me because that's how much I dislike her. Wow. So you really don't like her? <laughs> I really don't like her. So if someone says Rebel Wilson at a party to me, I'm just walking away. I really am. Uh, just just in case anyone is aware, is asking, is it if it's a Takawatiti movie, is he actually in it? The answer to that is yes, he is. But he's not in it enough that I would like, to be honest. So, in closing, so, yeah, carry on, carry on. No, I was gonna say so. That's another movie we'll just wait to come out on our uh, streaming platforms. Me, I, me personally, I would. I mean, everyone might, some people might watch it and like it, but then again, it's just down to taste. I mean, I hate it. Somebody who I know who hates the stuff I, who likes the stuff I hate, might love it. Hmm. But then again, it's just a case of everyone's taste differs. So, we we should let everyone else decide that. Okay, two movies I want to bring up, in your opinion, uh, they're resurrected, uh, resurrected from uh, great franchises, uh, Top Gun Two, and Bad Boys Ooh. for Life. What do you think? Uh, Top Gun Two looks interesting. It's going to be a bit of a shame because obviously Tony Scott is not with us, so he won't be directing it. But it'll be interesting to see what they uh, what they come up with. And what was the other one? Uh, Bad Boys for Life, uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. It, Bad it'll Boys will just, it will, yeah, it will just be the same. To be honest, I think it will just be like one and two only, a hell of a lot better. Okay, and they're like older now. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think Michael Bay directed this one. I don't think mm. so. That might be a bit better, but yeah, if you say Will Smith is older, but he doesn't look it, does he? No, and then coming off a of Gemini man. You got, he got a. Uh... <laughs> Which, to be fair, isn't as bad a movie as everyone makes it out to be, but it's still not great. Yeah, no, I was. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't horrible, but it. it, it uh, I, I, I felt like there was opportunity. It to me, it just felt mm. hollow. It felt hollow. Yeah, and it didn't help that the project itself has been through so many directors and actors. It's been in the uh, in the in the drums in the in the what do you call it. It's been in developmental health for 20 years, which also didn't help it. Mm -hmm. Right, so I've just got two more, and then uh, we can, if you like, since we are horror fans, we can discuss what's coming out in a couple of movies in the next couple of uh, months. In fact, one I believe you've already got over there, but we haven't yet. Okay. Yeah. So the next one is uh, Guy Ritchie's new gangster movie, The Gentleman, with Actually, he's got an American uh, in the lead. It's Matthew McConaughey. Yep. Now, everyone has said how bad The Gentleman is. I don't know if it's out in America yet, but it is um, It is out over here. Yeah, actually, it is. You know what? It is. is, it? Uh, it, it is out here, but it hasn't It hasn't really had a buzz. I haven't really heard too much of it, so that may yeah. speak to that it may be horrible. <laughs> so. I don't. I actually like it. I actually think it's quite good. Be mm -hmm. I think it's mainly because Hugh Grant is in it and he basically is like a posh guy but in this he's not and I think that's sort of excuse me I think that's sort of what makes it great because he's not actually posh he just acts like a proper gangster Yeah. and it's not as if they've uh, scrimpled on talent either because there's McConaughey Henry Golding from uh, Last Christmas and Crazy Rich Asians he's in it as well I'll tell you something. After watching him in that, I wouldn't like to uh, meet him in a dark alley with a gun, I tell you. Uh, who else in it? Oh, yes. Um, for, the, for the Downton Abbey fans out there, out there, Michelle... Is it Michelle Doherty's in it? She, I think it's... I think that's uh, that's the name. She was in Downton Abbey for a lot of seasons. But okay. she's it. She's in Yeah, she's in it as well. Um, hold on. Who else is in it? 
uh, Henry Golding's in it, Matthew McConaughey's in it, Michelle Dougherty's in it. Charlie Hunnam from from Pacific Rim's in it as well. Oh, okay. So they have some mm. they have some good people in it. They have some, they have some good solid talent in it. But it, but I think critics don't like it for whatever reason. But me, I think it's actually quite it is quite it's a lot funny in parts. I couldn't stop laughing for some of it. Yeah, and then uh, I notice with sometimes the critics say and what the actual movie is is, is uh, two different things. I've learned to kind of with the critics is fifty uh, fifty. I just found it funny, which is typical Guy Ritchie. If you have not seen Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which for me is the epitome of a British gangster movie, because it has action in it, it's quite it's very funny. There's a lot of characters in it, which is basically a lot of what the gentleman is. There's not that m- many characters in it, but it's funny and it's full of action. So as far as I'm concerned, I like it. Mm, okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. Oh, I wanted to ask you too uh, on Netflix. Mm-hmm. The Irishman with Robert De Niro. Would you be interested? No, but I haven't watched it yet. But I, oh, okay. I, that's the problem with Netflix, though. There's too much choice. I mean, yeah. on my on my list, I must have like hundreds upon hundreds of things I want to watch. I mean, there's more. There's uh, Shadow Hunters, which has got um, Catherine McNamara from Arrow in it. I've been ever since I got on Netflix. I said, right, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch yeah. it. But I still haven't. But this is like uh, Al Pacino and, and Robert De Niro, and uh, I, I'm interested to know what you think about it because it's a three-hour movie. Mm. And, uh, so far, I must it's have, half yeah, and half. On. I was just gonna say it's have, half and half. Go ahead. I must admit, I've, I have actually wanted to watch it ever since it came up on my uh, to watch feed. I have actually wanted to watch it, but the, but like I said, there's just always something new coming out, and it's just like I'm never gonna get a chance to watch it. Oh yeah, but. I will make a promise. I will make a vow here and now. By the next time, when we do ours next month, at this time next month, I will have actually watched it. So if I haven't watched it, I will officially resign from this segment. <laughs> but I will watch it. If I say I'm going to watch something, I will watch it. Hopefully you make it through. Cause it, I will. Yeah, but okay. If I say I'm going a target or something to do, I realistically say, right, I'm going to do it. I am going to do it no matter what. Mm. So, so just one more movie it's one more movie before I sign off on on all the movies I've watched um, 1917 which is Sam Mendes's new movie it's been out here three days and uh, six, seven hours ago I actually watched it how was and it? I'm very impressed with it as well it's very good The thing, it's kind of like it's groundbreaking because it's a movie that's done in one shot camera style. For those of you who don't know what one shot is, you probably it's self explanatory, but if you don't know, basically when you start the scene, you start the entire movie. So from there it goes wherever the actors go, the camera goes. So if you go into a bunker, it follows you into the bunker. If you go onto the battlefield, it follows you onto the battlefield. The only thing is, I would say it's more like a two shot uh, movie because it's, uh, it starts off in the day. I'm not going to say too much of what happens, but something happens. Uh, the hero gets knocked out, and then he wakes up at night, and it's all of a sudden gone tonight. So I'm going to give it the I'm going to give it a one shot, but I'm also going to say it's more like two because obviously it's one part through the day and one part through the night. Hmm. But it but it is absolute. I. I've never marveled at a one-shot movie before, but I have absolutely loved it. I really did. I might even go and watch it again this week, to be honest. Wow. Mm. Little bit of uh, a pointer, which somebody, which some people might want to know. Uh, Sam Mendes, who directed, um, oh, what was it? He directed Skyfall and Road to Perdition with Tom Hanks. That is actually based on his grandfather, grandfather's experience in World War One. So it is actually done quite well, and you know that if it's actually based on the director's grandfather, you know he will try and honor it to the full. I mean, you mentioned a war movie. Did you like? Did you watch Dunkirk? Did you like that? Or... I did actually. Okay. But the only problem with Dunkirk was you were saying four stories at the same time. One was over a day, one was over a week, one was over a month, I think it was. So it was kind of like, right, I've got to keep up with four stories at different time at different times. It's like this is a bit confusing. But this is all one shot spaced over I'll say a day. Hmm. 
but I don't know. I'm not quite. But obviously, it'll be done for edited for purposes. Obviously, but it's such a great movie, and literally, you can't. You, you just literally have to keep watching it. You can't even go to a toilet because you don't know what's going to happen next. Well, so is that good? It's that good. So we um we have four minutes and forty six seconds. Oh yes, let's talk about. Um, should we talk about two horror movies that are coming out soon? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming you've got the Good remake. That's already there. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you seen it yet? I haven't seen it. Yeah. Is it? Neither have I. But I <laughs> will be. I really, really looking forward to it. So I watch it for so we can talk about it next episode. That'll be my homework assignment. Yeah, hopefully it'll be out over here, but I'm not quite sure when that is. And uh, what was that one I wanted? Oh, yeah, just a quick uh, one. There will be uh, Margot Robbie's uh, Birds of Prey movie coming out. Okay. We've got it in February. I'm not sure if you have it at the same time or not. I'm assuming you will, but that's on my uh, the very top end of my uh, to-watch list. So hopefully this time next month, A, it'll be out, and B, I watched it. And for anyone who's planning to go out to cinema on Valentine's Day, in England, we have Sonic the Hedgehog to watch on Valentine's Day. Yeah, I don't... Didn't they have to redo it, though? They, they kinda... redid it. They, yeah, they redid it completely because nobody likes Sonic as he was. They redid it. I've seen the trailer for it. He literally looks like a 90s hedgehog. If that, you okay. would find any Game Gear or Master System. Mm, okay. So, it sort of wasn't good to go to start off with, but now that we've done that, every, near, I'll say near enough everyone's happy, but there's always somebody who won't be, so... Fingers crossed it's as good as it actually looks. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting. Um, okay, okay. So we got the Sonic the Hedgehog and the uh, horror movies. Uh, anything yep. else you want to say before we close out this uh, uh, year in review and movies and then what to look forward to in the first quarter of 2020? Uh, well, no, nothing much yet, but I just would like to say thank you to everyone who listens. Because obviously, without an audience, we wouldn't be doing this month in, month out. Uh, yes, and uh, guys, please, listeners, like, subscribe, comment, uh, Final Cut film reviews, and then also uh, Deeper Than Music Radio. Uh, again, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Castbox FM, um, Spreaker, and all the other pa- podcasting platforms. And again, Dino, um, thanks again, man, for our monthly segment. Uh, 2020 we'll keep this going in regular rotation <laughs> we'll try but we, yeah. but we hopefully will and uh, thank you for having me on as, for, as always it's always an not, honor not a problem so this is uh, Mark and Dino signing off for our film review segment on Deeper Than Music Radio goodbye everyone The fans, the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music.